Hello everyone and welcome back to RP2000 Testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.11 with Realism Overhaul. In the previous video I had some serious difficulties with this particular rocket, the Manu, if you will, uh, named after the fact that that's an M-sized rocket motor, N-sized rocket motor, O and O. And I have discovered the reason for this. The reason for this was I was running 1.11.0 instead of 1.11.2, which is the latest version, as far as I know, and 1.11.0 had a severe issue with really tiny parts. In particular, there is a line in physics.config in the game, and this tells the game to assign a minimum mass to all parts. It's called part RB mass min. Uh, all parts with a rigid body have it, and the minimum mass in 1.11.0 was 0.03, which means for all the little uh, things inside this sounding rocket core, all those little platforms that we have for the CubeSat, well, instead of each of them being their current, uh, their correct mass, even though it reads their correct mass in here, by the way, in other words, uh, here we've got uh, 0.3 kilograms, 0.2 kilograms, uh, 0.3 kilograms, etc. Instead of it being those masses, all of them got set to 30 kilograms. And you can see the problem with that. We did not get as far as we should have. Now, in 1.11.1 and 1.11.2, uh, that line has been changed to 0 0.002, or 2 kilograms, which is still heavier than any of these is supposed to be, and of course means that when Mechjeb reads its delta V stats, it is wrong. It is assuming that the mass is the masses that we have here, whereas the real physical mass is going to be much more than that. In fact, none of the information that we see at the bottom of the screen or in the corner is going to be right. None of this is correct. It's not reading the correct mass either. So uh, basically that mass gets added in without us even knowing. So that's a little bit unpleasant, but the 0 0.002 will be a heck of a lot better than the 0 0.03. Uh, so 2 kilograms instead of 30 kilograms. So it's an improvement, but it's not ideal. And in the physics.config file, it says minimum mass that a part's rigid body can have. If this is too small, then physics, uh, the NVIDIA physics engine, will not behave when it is dropped as a vessel. This is a default if a minimum RB mass is not defined in the part config. So it's saying that I can define minimum RB mass for the parts. Now, technically, I've set these things to have um, no physical, well, it's physical significance equals what? Physics significance equals one, which is the same as for a regular thermometer barometer, uh, you know, the that one. Uh, so I've set it to the same physics significance as that thermometer, but for some reason it's still having, it still has the problem. So apparently it still keeps the rigid body even though I told it not to have physics significance, I don't understand. Now if I do set the minimum rigid body mass in the config for the parts, I know this is all very technical for you guys, but please understand I tried to make a proper CubeSat thing system and the game isn't letting me, okay? Uh, but uh, if I do that, I have found out that suddenly when I have this thing crash into the surface, it goes past the speed of light. So, <laughs> so they mean it. They mean it that uh, that physics will not behave when it is dropped as a vessel. It really doesn't. So we're going to have to watch out for that. It might be that even at point oh oh two, these little guys are going to behave wrong. So... Yeah, but let me retest this rocket and verify that in 1.11.1 and above, uh, it is at least partially fixed. It won't be ideal, but it'll be partially fixed. And of course, to do that, we still need to slap on uh, another antenna, right? Because, yeah, well, this is going to be inconvenient. How about its physics significance? Is that going to throw us off a lot? Well, we're going to find out. That's what this testing is all about. Okay, so throttle up, SAS on, SAS being provided by one of the little platforms in the probe core, and launch. Now it has figure. See, that's how it was supposed to go. 
And we want to get up to our apple apps just before doing the next stage. Otherwise we won't get the right mileage out of it. It'll get too much drag because we're already going so fast. But if we wait too long, we'll stop spinning, so separation and ignition. Okay. The spin here is a little bit weak already. Uh, we tilted, we tilted, ah, uh, well, we got uh, 29, well, 28, it's uh, now decreasing. But okay, let's do the science. Um, gravity scanning can't be done right now, it's true. And actually, are the antennae poking out? No, they aren't. So it was in space, but at least it does better. And honestly, uh, if not for the fact that it's making the parts heavier than they ought to be, it'd do even better than it did just here. After all, the red mass, the mass that's supposed to be, is point. Uh, well, is 21 kilograms, but it's making each of those platforms in here three kilograms. So actually, the effective mass of this is much more. And Londar time. Well, we'll see what the behavior is when it crashes. And after this, we will attempt to make orbit. Okay, it just disposed. Uh, it was safely disposed of, no physics anomalies, good. So, back to vehicle assembly. Right, well, let me concoct a rocket that can make to make orbit, potentially, maybe, hopefully. We do have some uh, tools. Uh, obviously we have the reaction wheel, that's important. I don't think the CubeSat RCS will do. I wish I had some other RCS, but that comes later in the tech tree by, by design, so. Um, oh, but the Skyroar third stage, um, oh, did I, I unlocked, right, I unlocked, uh, like, Engineering 101 in order to get, um, something or another. Oh, the antennae. So, we got the Skyroar third stage, which is pretty hefty. Maybe that should, we should wait a while for that, again, unlocking that. We actually have the science to unlock more, but I want to try and get to orbit with the science that we've got. So you won't unlock that stage yet either. Okay, let me see what I can do. Okay, given that we don't really know what's going on up here perfectly, uh, we have a 08000 rocket motor there. We've got a cluster of seven N5800 rocket motors there. Um, the real life advisability of doing that is questionable, but there they are. And then we have a long tank at the bottom of which we have two. Oh, and we need the high pressure tanks. Thank you for reminding me, game. And so we have two of the. Well, that changes our situation quite a lot. I don't think we're going to make orbit like this. But we'll see where we go because that will tell us what we are capable of and what we need to increase. So. Two S2720s down there, and they're not exactly where they... Um, oh, they'll be fine. So, yeah. We will see where this gets. Obviously, it's not reading as much delta V as it needs to get to orbit, and we probably have less. But we have other problems as well, like control. So, we will see what goes wrong exactly. This is no longer a menu. It is uh, on... S2. <laughs> okay. I'm still hearing explosions. I don't know what exploded, but okay. As long as the world doesn't explode, we're still good to go. Throttle up. Oh, well, we haven't done the pad science, but we'll, we'll just continue. SAS on. Ignition. And launch. So, finally using Smart ASS for the first time. Well, looking good. We're gonna have high G-forces though. These engines do have gimbling. I figured that a surface-to-air missile probably would, maybe, or something.
Hmm. Seem to run out pretty quickly, but okay. Uh, we need to... Well, I think we're high enough to extend the antennae. Um, they're out. Okay, let me just close the hatch. Okay, so we can separate that stage safely. Good. And the reaction wheel is not exactly super powerful, by by the way. Um, it is a tiny, tiny, tiny reaction wheel, and it is realism overall conducive at that. But it can hold this much. Keeping in mind we have no idea what kind of Delta V we actually have here. Alright. Um, ignition. And separation and ignition. I mean we got some more speed out of it and that's good. We got to almost 6,000 meters per second. So we got a uh, speed record of 2,500, not 5,000? Hmm. Okay, fine. Well, we already got the space stuff. Oh, oh no, no, I didn't want to retract those. Oh gosh, I shouldn't make it toggle. Oh well, it's dead now. What if we had two separate S2 stages? This is really getting wicked. What if, instead of having one S2 stage, we had two S2 stages? Interstage... Oh, as a minimum one meter? Well, then our stage is gonna have to be one meter. I, I think I can make a conic tank there. I don't know, I don't seem to have all the little fancy fairings that I used to have. Um, what happened to all of those? I guess with the recolor UI they figured that's not necessary anymore. But this doesn't even have the recolor. It just has those. Hmm. So that's strange. Don't tell me I need procedural fairings for everything in order to get the recolor UI. I thought that was standard for procedural fairings. And textures unlimited of course. Well, now we need more engines down here. Let's have four, why not? That seems convincing. Uh oh, we're over the part limit. Ah, uh, well, you know what? We'll take off some of the things in here. I don't think we, well, we might need the extra battery. I threw a lot of stuff in here that we didn't need. We definitely need the antenna, barometer, star tracker. No, no, I'll, I'll take out a battery or two. And we are under the part limit. And note the mass limit is still stock mass limits. Not RP1 is at 40. Oh, I forgot those. Um, can it stand like this? Maybe it can stand like this. Well. We're going to find out. A thousand meters per second, it says. That's good. Could be good. Let's see. Uh, uh, well, let's just say S5. <laughs> or, well, 4, fine. Uh, wow, it hopped just there. And we still hear stuff splashing down. But then I did abandon the last mission, but that would be really far away. Anyway, uh, well, it's going to lift off on its own when it's ready. Ignition. That was quick. At least they lit evenly. Well, on the bright side, this sort of makes our G-forces more moderate. Quite tolerable. Okay, separation and ignition. That could have gone worse, so... Good times. Well, we're gonna have a signal problem pretty soon. This is the horizon problem and just straight up signal problem, but I can extend the antennae now. And this time I must promise not to bring them in. I accidentally pressed the hotkey for the antennae instead of the science. 
Okay. Well, separate that stage. Um. Well, before we lose communication. Well, I mean, I think there's the Bermuda station or something, right? Let me see. Uh. Well, if there is, it's not got a line to it right now, huh? Uh. Maybe. Oh, there we go. No, that's okay. There's Bermuda. All right, so we can wait until apoapsis. All right, we will do so. It looks like we can get to orbit. So the turn rate with the reaction wheel, well, it's it's enough. Technically, you would have to have a set of three of those wheels. We only have one right now, but configuring it like that would probably give people headache. So, and not be in keeping with the idea that this should all be kept simple or reasonably simple. Okay, well, let's see where we get the ignition. Separation and ignition. I should have put a relay antenna on this. We are in orbit. We are in orbit. Okay, science. Transmit. We've done that. Uh, the only new one will be the gravity. And it, it, that is biome dependent. But we don't have enough electric charge to do more than once. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, when you think about it. We have our first bit of space debris. Wonderful. Okay. Back to Space Center. Of course, in my haste, I didn't even pick up the the contract to go to orbit. <laughs> I yeah, I haven't picked up the contract to go to space or to go to orbit. So, uh, explore Earth, I guess. Return to Earth from orbit. Look at all the VIP and tourist contracts. I need to... Maybe contract configurator should be required so that we can turn those off. Would be wonderful. Anyway, the Explore the Earth is the only interesting one, but um, can we bring things back? We don't have a heat shield right now. We, well, we can unlock heat shields with the science that we have, so we can get survivability, and then we have like all the heat shields. So that's good. And parachutes. Parachutes will, will also be important. I forgot to mention real shoots last time, but... Um, we I did put that in, and now we have the real shoot parachute stuff, which we can test. I haven't tested that in 1.11 yet. So, that is a thing. Basic rocketry. I think we should unlock basic rocketry just so we have the RCS units. And I don't have to use the reaction wheel for stuff. And we have the more up-to-date procedural part tanks. And... Well, with that RCS, I think we're okay. Uh, we have this RCS block and those are that RCS. Those are pretty big though, because we uh, the small, really small ones. That's that's a small one. That'll be okay. Okay, so we've got a bunch of new stuff. Let's see if I can put together a mission to bring something back down. All right, so I think I'm going to try and launch and recover a little CubeSat, which is what you see here. But we, we'll make it more robust, I think, uh, especially since our smallest heat shield is 0.625 meters, which is huge. And we still have to put the parachutes. We've got a battery on top. That's because I don't have too many nodes in here. And a command core, a uh, simple antennae module, and a star tracker. That's all there is. No temperature, none of that, because our contract is just for recovery. And of course, in space, we've already done uh, some of the basic science anyway. So our goal is simply to come back. And we will have the retro package on here as well. So uh, we are going to have a cone. And the retro package will consist of these RCS ports, which will also help for control. We don't have any reaction wheels, so... Uh, maybe we'll have... Do we have eight of these? Or... I mean, I'm thinking about roll. Since we won't have... The reaction wheel. 
we might need to control roll. Oh, but we have to watch out. I've still got a 30 part limit. We'll just accept what role we've got. It's fine. In fact, I well, we, we probably want pitch and yaw at least. So okay, I'll keep those. Um, I'll make it a service module tank, even though it's probably not strictly necessary. And these are already on hydrazine. We have tech level one right now, and so 100% hydrazine. Uh, 100% hydrazine. There we go. Okay. So, that's a thing. The cost is still very suspicious. In fact, this hydrazine doesn't... Well, I mean, maybe hydrazine doesn't cost that much. I don't know. Is this enough to bring us back from orbit? Probably. Yeah, probably. As long as our parachutes are not too heavy. And those need to be smaller. This is another reason why you want action groups enabled from the start instead of being unlocked with the VAB. Because without action groups being available from the start, you can't access the real shoot parachute editor. So that would be a problem. So the smallest size is that. But that's the size physically. We care more about the mass. And so I'll go with pressure pre-deployment. 0.3 and apply it to all symmetry counterparts. Still, it makes the makes the parachutes really heavy. Point oh, I mean, 45 kilograms is, doesn't seem that heavy, but may end up being very heavy. But we'll go along with it. It's not the worst it could be. Obviously, this will all go in a fairing. And I suppose the payload adapter is what we want now. Hollow truss, wow, that's huge. Oh, it resized automatically. It's That's fine. I'll take that. Well, I mean, it looks good, but it's not really what I want. I want it much smaller. Okay, fine. One meter. One meter seems to be the minimum. All right, now we have new tanks, new engines. I'll go with this this, this integral structure tank. Any chance? It, can, it looks like it might be priced. Okay, so... Here, if I just put a procedural tank, it doesn't have any price. So this one is messed up. But this integral structure one, it does have a price. So maybe it's okay. Does it? It still has infinite expandability. So that I will still have to look into. Okay, 1.1 uh, meter rocket. What are our new engines? Well, we could have used the third stage of Skyrora XL. That's that is a thing. I I'll unlock that. And that's a little bit big for this, but it's not impossible. It give only a thousand fifty nine meters per second though. And that's because it's just sort supposed to position things in orbit. It's not really a major stage of the rocket. That's a one kilonewton engine. That's I wonder why it's only MH one three. I thought I made it configurable. We'll need to check on that. This one is a MH and Mon three thirty kilonewton engine, thirty ish kilonewton. And then there's the Sky Force and Sky Force um, vacuum. Those are for Skyrora. Well, let me get this MH and Mon three thirty kilonewton vacuum engine. That seems like a good thing to use for this stage. It's basically like an AJ-10, but we don't call it that because then we'd have to give money to Aerojet Rocketdyne or something. Okay, so that's probably, I mean, that's an okay thrust weight ratio in vacuum, and that's tons of delta V. It's a bit, it's probably going to be a bit heavy for our first stage if we do that, though. So for now, we're going to make it tighter. The question is, I mean, I think we're going to need to use the Sky Force engines. We could cluster a few of these together, but they're more vacuum. Uh, at sea level, it's only 10.5 kilonewtons, so we really can't. We could continue using the S2.720s, though. I wonder what kind of first stage we would get if we did that. It's interesting how it automatically uh, sizes itself like that. 
Do we have to have nine? Are we going to have nine of these S2.720s? No, it doesn't seem like it might need nine. Maybe five. Let's see. Oh, I probably haven't made it a service module, a high pressure tank. We need to check on that for everything. So this actually needs to be a high pressure tank. Make sure those engines are happy with that. Yes, pressure fed, okay. This also needs to be a high pressure tank. And the engine in there says, okay. SC-1003 is one of the sure strut engines. Oh, now that it's a high pressure tank, we've lost some performance here. Let's see, it'd probably be better to extend this one. We lost a lot of performance, more than a thousand meters per second. Well, five engines are no longer so good. Well, maybe we can use, instead of the aluminum high pressure tank, can we aluminum lithium this? Does that make it better? Uh, let's see, 8,433 with aluminum lithium. Yeah, it gives us 90. Aluminum copper? Not quite as good. But aluminum lithium is more expensive. But okay, well, let's do both then. It doesn't make sense to have one and not the other. 8,772. It's possible. Should have made this one one of the newer tanks, but it's all right for now. It's a small thing. It's amazing how quickly it gets to 13.6 tons, huh? We can fit one more thing. <laughs> I think we just better go with this for now. What should we call this? Uh, I'll just call Returner 1. We can't even put the... Well, I could put one launch clamp. I guess one is better than none, is it? Maybe. Okay, let's see what happens. Every time I come out here... Oh, I forgot the antenna. Oh, okay. Recover. Every time I come out there, something's splashing in the water. This will be solved once I add tweak scale to that payload adapter. I think tweak scale's working okay so far. Especially now that it seems like the newer procedural tanks are pricing right, or right-ish. So I'll have to get tweak scale on that, and then, then this itself will have a good enough data transmitter that doesn't need to be extended. And it also has the control core for the launch vehicle, and so we'll just use that. Of course, the fairing situation is a little bit more complicated when that's there. Because it doesn't really have fairing nodes, so I'll have to think about that. Okay, uh, launch. Yep, every time I come out here, I hear something splashing in the water. That might be a physics issue with those parts. Uh, I think it's that little control core that I splashed down right at the beginning of this video. So, yeah. Okay, ignition and launch. Do we have enough? I don't know. We'll see. We are definitely misusing these S2.720s. Okay, getting ready for staging. And staging. Okay, we've got this one, and it's probably in need of shifting plume. Depends, I mean, you know, there is a certain amount of creep up with flames. It's a very soothing flame, for some reason, even though it is MMH and Mon3. Hmm. Okay, fairings. I don't know if we have enough for orbit, but then maybe the little engines, well, the little RCS thrusters on here could do it. One way or another, we're going to test whether it can come back down. I'm going to arm the parachutes right now. Splashed into ocean, entered orbit. Yes, we did those things. We don't have a whole lot of electric charge. We only have one electric charge module in the little cube set. 
Oh, I forgot to action group the... Uh, it gets all fuzzy with my post-processing thing. I forgot to action group the antennae. Well, extend solar panel. We really need the antennae working right now. Um, simple antennae, extend antennae. All right, we have boosted our signal. If it turns out we can dump some ablator, that'd be nice, or some of the hydrazine, we'll see. All right, that's that for that stage. Now we'll just uh, separate that off. And RCS on, and we want retrograde. Oop, I guess we have to stage those RCS. Oh, no, don't bump the stage. Don't bump it. Okay, we're sidestepping. All right, fine. So, we'll have communication with Bermuda for a little while. We're about 600 short. Let me just see if I use some. It uh, doesn't seem to be increasing our orbit very much, does it? That doesn't seem right. But that's the story of everything around here these days. Yeah, I would expect... There are only 40 Newton RCS ports. But, you know... It should be accelerating me more than that, shouldn't it? So we're going to have to find 600 meters per second from somewhere else. Well, we could probably cut down on the hydrazine if that's if they're just going to be for orientation and... Even the orbiting, I don't even know if they can do it. Okay, well, well, we'll think about that. Oh, persistent rotation did not persist. Maybe it was too slow? I thought I had more choices, too. We'll have to review persistent rotations... thing. Oh, we lost comms. Well, good thing I am the parachutes. And... Smart ASS probably doesn't care too much about comms anyway. Yep, it, well, I mean, it's still doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, we've encountered the atmosphere. Let's see what happens. The little antennae might be in trouble. But functionally, we don't need them anymore. Yep, the simple antennae broke right away. Let me come out of fizz warp. Oh, it's overheating! What? No. Oh, no. What kind of heat shield is this? Parachute exploded due to overheating first. Well, the parachutes were behind the heat shield. Well, looks like there are other problems that we're going to have to figure out here in KSP 1.11. And, well, I'll look into that. I fixed one problem already from the first episode. And, well, I mean, they fixed it, and I realized that they fixed it a little bit late. Well, fixed is strong, because the mass issue still affects the CubeSat to some extent. Uh, it's just not as bad as it was in Episode 1 now. But I don't know if these are good. So, we'll see. We'll see about that. Anyway... With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.